the first step when we initiate a request for a peering connection the peering connection may either fail or may go to the pending acceptance stage so once the request has failed it cannot go back to accepted rejected or deleted states and the failed peering connection remains visible to the requester for two hours and the pending acceptance state it's obviously waiting for the peering connection to be accepted by the acceptor vpc owners so it will wait for that period of time to be accepted by the acceptor vpc here the owner of the requester vpc can delete the request in other words the requester can back off with its request of creating the vpc peering connection and the owner of the accepting vpc can either accept or reject the request so if it is accepted it moves to the provisioning state and if no action is taken within seven days by the acceptor vpc it gets expired and same here as well it's visible for two days to both vpc owners and then it's no longer visible next if the request is rejected it moves to the rejected state and the same here as well the rejected vpc pairing connection remains visible to the owner of the requester vpc for two days and visible to the owner of the acceptor vpc for two hours if the request was created within the same AWS account, the rejected request remains visible for two hours itself. Next up, once the VPC pairing connection request has been accepted, it will soon be in the active state. So once it is active, you can make use of the pairing connection and in this state or being active, you cannot reject it anymore. But if you want to close it, you can delete it. The next step that you see for deleting applies to the inter-region VPC pairing connection. This can be put by either party when they send a delete request when the status is active or it can be sent by the owner of the accepting VPC that has raised a delete request while in the pending acceptance state. Last is the deleted step here as well. This can be put by either party when they send a delete request when the status is active or it can be sent by the owner of the accepting VPC that has raised a related request. But the most important thing to remember here is that VPC peering connections remain visible to the party that has deleted it for two hours and visible to the other party for two days. If the VPC peering connection was created within the same account or within the same AWS account, the deleted request remains visible for two hours. So I hope you got the whole idea of the life cycle. If you still have some doubts, please put them in the comment section below and I would request you to listen to this again and relate them with the same with the flow diagram that we have here to get a better understanding. So in the lifecycle policy that you see here, we have clear steps. So you have to initiate the request which might go to the pending acceptance stage where the acceptor has to accept it which moves it back to the provisioning state and then to the active state. So once it is in the active state, basically you can make use of the peering connection so from the active state, you cannot reject it or you cannot make it expired or you cannot make it failed, but you can surely delete it if you don't want it anymore. And when you are in the pending state, you can see we have directions towards uh, if the request is not accepted, it gets expired or if it is rejected or if it is deleted. So when you initiate the request also, you can backtrack by just canceling the request and it goes to the failed state where it will be visible for two hours to the requester and it is no longer visible anymore. So I hope you got the idea here for all the states that we have like initiating request, pending acceptance, provisioning, active, deleting, then deleted, or it can be rejected or expired or failed. And the most important part is no longer visible because it will no longer be visible after a certain point of time. So till now we spoke about two VPC pairing connections. Let's take it to more than two VPCs and let's talk about multiple VPC peering connection. This is very important to understand because you have to keep in mind that it is a one to one relationship between two VPCs. That is why always remember that there is no support for transitive relationships or connections. So which means if John and Jesse are friends with each other and Jesse is friends with David, it doesn't mean that John by default becomes friends with David, isn't it? And that's the same way as if you are friends with someone else and that person is friends with the other person. But here it does mean that you have a common friend, but you both cannot be friends by default, isn't it? Until and unless you have a friendship relationship or unless you have a peering connection, in other words. So in mathematical terms also, transitive also means like if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. But here it is not possible that way. So if you see here, we have the VPC1 which has a peering connection with VPC2 and VPC2 has the same with VPC3. 
but that doesn't mean VPC one has a transitive relationship with VPC three. So if A equals B and B equals C, you cannot say that A is equal to C. Okay, so the transitive property does not exist here. So I hope that was clear. Let's move on. So the next limitation or restriction that you must know, which I have already spoken about. So we cannot have a peering connection or VPC peering connection for VPCs with overlapping CIDR blocks. So what does that mean? So if you see the blocks here for case one, we have both the CIDR blocks, which are the same for both VPCs. So that is 10.0.0.0 slash 16 for both the VPCs. And it means we cannot have the peering connection here. But you might feel you can create a CIDR block that is not overlapping. But if you see the case two, where we have non overlapping CIDRs as well, here as well, if the VPCs have multiple IPv4 CIDR blocks, you cannot create a VPC peering connection if any of the CIDR blocks overlap. Remember this very carefully, if any of the CIDR blocks overlap. So even if you have one CIDR block that is overlapping, you cannot have a VPC peering connection to that. So this means regardless of even if you intend to use the VPC peering connection for communication between non overlapping CIDR blocks, you cannot do that. So remember this very carefully, you cannot have a VPC peering connection for VPCs with overlapping CIDR blocks. Still not clear. Let's take another example for for edge to edge routing through a VPN connection or an AWS direct connect connection. So here as well, if you see, we have a peering connection between VPC one and VPC two and VPC two has a site to site VPN connection with the corporate network. The users or the people working in the corporate network can make use of the VPN connection to connect to VPC two, isn't it? But they cannot have an edge routing connection to VPC one. So remember that you cannot use VPC two to extend the peering relationship to exist between VPC one and the corporate network. So now let's talk about another scenario for edge to edge routing through an internet gateway. If you see the visual below, we have a VPC peering connection between VPC one and VPC two. Here a VPC one has an internet gateway attached to it and it's able to connect to the internet and the same way the traffic coming in is also able to access resources in VPC one using the internet gateway. But VPC two doesn't have any internet gateway connections. And here as well, we cannot have an edge routing capability, which might help the traffic coming into the VPC one using the Internet Gateway to access the instances at VPC two. So this transitive property also does not exist. And this edge to edge routing also does not exist. You cannot have this using VPC peering connections. Too many examples already, isn't it? <laughs> but there is one last example that you should understand. So if you see the visual below, we have a VPC peering connection between VPC one and VPC two. Here our VPC two has a VPC endpoint that connects it to the Amazon S3, which allows VPC two to connect to S3 and store files and records. But VPC one does not have any endpoint connection to S3, as you can see in the diagram. And here as well, you cannot use VPC two to extend the peering relationship to exist between VPC one and Amazon S3. So even if VPC two has a connection to S3, the VPC one cannot have the edge routing through VPC two to access data at S3. So I hope you are clear and you got a very clear understanding of what you can do with VPC peering and what you cannot do. So let's move on. So let's talk about some of the important things that you need to remember for VPC peering. So the first thing is that you cannot create a VPC peering connection between VPCs that have matching or overlapping IPv4 or IPv6 IDA blocks. So I hope that is almost clear by now. When we speak about the quota for usage of VPC peering, by default, you get 50 active VPC peering connections per VPC. And the maximum quota is 125 peering connections per VPC. And here the number of entries per route table should be increased accordingly. And that might be an impact on the network performance as well. And by default, you get 25 outstanding VPC pairing connection request and you get one week that is around 168 hours of expiry time for an unaccepted VPC pairing connection request. And this quota cannot be increased for VPC pairing does not support transitive uh, pairing relationships as we already discussed. So you must remember this. The VPC pairing does not support transitive pairing relationships and you cannot have more than one VPC pairing connection between the same two VPCs at the same time. And the next point is any tank that you create for your VPC pairing connection 
are only applied in the account or region in which you are creating them. So remember while creating tags or using Cloud Custodian for tracking the tags, make sure that you remember this point very carefully. And you cannot connect to or query the Amazon DNS server in a peer VPC. 